So LTE advanced and LTE both use a frequency reuse factor of one, which means they all the cells use the same frequency. And um, that is possible because of several advances that have been made in avoiding the interference with itself. So one way was COMP, coordinated multi-point operation. Um, so basically, the, there is no problem if you use the same frequency in, near your cell, but the only problem that happens is at the edges. Now in this picture, actually I have shown two different colors. So they could be different colors and they could be same color, same frequency at different frequencies. Okay. I've used different colors just to show that, you know, left and right, you can figure out which one is which. So this particular mobile is receiving signals from both red and blue. However, they are coordinated in one of the two ways. One is that both of them transmit and um, somehow they coordinate so that you can see red and blue in every frame. Right? They are coordinated. Here they are coordinated so that different frames are for different color. So you see um, red and blue separately. Only red, only blue and so on and so forth. In either case, basically either they, they will um, they will coordinate the, what they call the resource, resource block. So if I use one resource block, you won't use that resource block, at least not at the edge. And remember, I can use that resource block near my cell. So because of the directionality, because of, um, um, you know, the ranging and everything else, the, the, the cells are programmed such that the, the resources are programmed so that only people at the edge have a problem and they probably solve the problem over there. Okay. So this is called coordinated multi-point operation. Multi-point because multiple cells. And they are coordinating. And how do they coordinate? They don't coordinate over the air. All of these cells are connected by wire to each other. Right? Every cell is connected by wire, by wire to something. Otherwise, you know, signal cannot come there. And so when we say coordination in the rest of the slides, that is all coming underground. Okay? It could be that sometimes they have a wireless backhaul. So that is possible, but generally, you know, you can assume that there is a wire going underground, which is connecting to the cell tower and then it is going wireless. Okay. So basically they can talk to each other very well without any error, much, much error. And they can say, oh, look, I am going to, there, there is a mobile there and I am going to do this for this mobile. Okay. So they both on transmit on the same resource block at the same time to the same mobile. If they were, they will be doing basically, they could do that too, by the way. But they would generally do that for broadcast because exactly the same information is going to come down and then the signal is going to add. It is going to come down such a way. But generally, you know, the, the, so this is one way is that you is informed about all these decisions that, okay, I'm going to we are decided this is how we are going to handle this. Now, of course, the communication with UE is only wireless, but between the E and Bs, it is wired communication. Relay nodes. So basically, there are situations where the main tower cannot reach. For example, if you are in a city in between two big, top, big buildings, you know, the main thing cannot reach. But on a, on a block away at the cross section that we could put a relay node which can see the main tower. Okay. So relay nodes are small towers um, and they run actually on the same frequency. So again, we use that single frequency thing everywhere. So this is called donor cell, which is really the main cell, main tower. And this is called the relay node. And this area is covered by the relay node. 
as shown here, right? Um, and so what happens is the way these both can work at the same time is because the donor tower, donor cell, or donor E and B, D, E and B, knows about the relay node and knows that relay node needs to talk to the this particular mobile or this set of mobiles. So it gives that much time to that. It's just coordination, COMP. Okay, so it will say, okay, all right, now don't, relay node, this is your time, you can do the downstream transmission, I'm not going to do the downstream transmission, not at least in your area. Okay, same thing for the upstream transmission, now you don't know it's time for your upstream transmission and you know, you, and so on and so forth. So, so let's see, the relay nodes are low power base stations used to enhance performance at the cell edge, hot spot areas and indoor coverage. Now hot spot is, if there's a big crowd and you need more power, extra power, then you just put this cell because you see this distance is very small as compared to distance from here. So this can provide much better coverage in that area. And indoor coverage is clear, you know, it could be a mall or a hospital or something and, um, and so this can handle that, okay. A modified version of ETRAN air interface UU is defined. So there is a new interface UU and this is UN. Now um, basically, so this is slightly different than that. And um, so, so that is, the, so they have defined that so the relay can operate. Both donor and relays may use the same or different frequencies, may use the same or different frequencies, self interference, Relay transmission may interfere with its reception on the same frequency and that is avoided using time sharing. That is basically avoided using COMP, which was the previous slide. Donor does the mobility management. Now, if this mobile moves from this cell to the next cell, this is the one that will handle it, right? Relay node is limited and doesn't really know about the world doesn't know about the other cells, things like that, right? So that part of mobility is managed by the donor cell. Okay? Um, the concept of relay node can be extended to other cells. So for example, this is a normal base station and this is called a macro cell but we could install a cell inside a home. Inside a home and that would be called home ENB. Just like we talked about relay node, this is a home ENB. And this cell is called a femto cell. So, so basically, the idea here is exactly similar to what we saw before for the relay nodes. The, the femto cell can use the same frequency as the main cell and then the main cell can avoid that or it can use a different frequency. Okay. You could also have something called um, rate, remote radio heads, RRH. So basically, this is simply a transmission thing, another concept of a cell that uh, discovers this area. So this is another kind of relay node. Okay, so these are three relay nodes so far. The normal relay node that we saw before, and then now we can call that a small cell as well. And then there's a femto cell. That takes us to the whole variety of cells in the next slide. But before I go, let me see. Let me finish this slide and we'll stop for the questions. So UE selects the base station with the strongest signal, right? So generally, if, a, if there is a mobile, which is called UE, user element, it selects the signal. So now here, the signal is stronger from the main cell. Okay, so normally, the mobile will select the main cell. However, it is better for the system that this does not go to mobile, goes to the relay node. 
even though the power of the relay node is less. So this decision is made not based upon the power, this is just based upon the global considerations, basically in global in the sense that whole cell wide consideration. So this is called cell range extension. So the cell range, if you were to plot equal power line, that would be right here, the, the dark red line. That is equal power. At that edge, the power of the relay node is same as the power of the main, main, you know, actually donors ENV as we call it, okay, D, E, N, V, and R, N, the power at the dark red. But this light red is where D, E, N, V has decided that we should allow. So basically, even though the power is less here, it will connect with that. Okay, so it's called cell range extension. So cell range extension allows a small cell to serve more users by requiring UE to join the small cell even if the power is slightly below the macro cell and interference on the macro is mitigated by coordination. So COMP is again used here so that even though the power normally is, power normally here is higher from the cell but it will not be used. Basically that particular resource block will not be used when it is trying to receive from the other tower. Alright, this may be a good point to just have a break and ask question. Any questions about any of these concepts of, so the, basically the COMP was the first concept where you use the same frequency and you decide when the right base station transmits. So, so the user element or the mobile does not get two signals which are colliding with each other. They just collaborate with each other. Okay, so that is used in the relay cells, that is used in the home EMB, which is called femtocell, and that is used here in the range extension as well. Any questions? Is it clear? All right, so then there are more cells, uh, we are going to, I'm just going to list them. So macro cell is the main cell, macro. Micro cell is smaller than that, pico is smaller than that, so micro is less than a mile, pico is in building with public access and femto is in building with restricted access. So femto is generally used for home because nobody can just walk into your home, so that is restricted access. Pico cell is used with public access in a mall, in a hospital, train station, whatever public places. And so that is pico cell, femto cell, atro cell is in the room. You could have a cell which is so small that it is inside a room. A jepto cell on the desk, I have not seen any of those two, but the concepts exist. All right. Notice that there are no milli cells and no nano cells. Somehow they miss those two. They went all the way to 10 dash minus 21, but missed the 9. 6 to 12, jumped over to 12. And um, so this is, um, now again, all of these cells are connected by wired network. So when you say femto cell to your home, actually what you have is a DSL to your home and then wireless which belongs to your carrier, right? So your cell phone will need to be connected to that carrier. Say for example, if you have AT&T femto cell, so you will be charged for AT&T minutes or whatever that is. So as soon as you get out of the house, you will connect to the real macro cell but inside your home, you will be connected to your femto cell. Your data will be taken and sent over DSL to wherever it needs to go. <coughs> that point is important to notice that the, the, the communication between the E and Bs is underground.
femto cells now femto cells are there in the sense that um, some companies have tried it out in some homes i tried to get one could not get one but um, in some areas if you are in the united states they are trying it out if you are part of the trial then you know you can get a femto cell or you can buy a femto cell i don't know what one of the two but here in st louis it was not available at least to me when i looked at it till i looked at it four years ago so i don't know maybe available now but basically that improves the signal for example at my home it never rings there's no signal right and so that is the reason i was looking into these these things so if you are in the situation where the the phone signal doesn't reach the macro cell signal doesn't reach you know you might want to look into femto cells so 50 to 100 meter cell radius indoor residential so how means a small office home office back hall over dsl we have said all of this plug and play now since this is a customer installable nobody will come to your home to install a femto cell so this is something that you know just like your dsl you get something in the mail and then you just have to connect right so so basically this is customer installable plug and play self organizing self optimizing so the next slide will tell you what self organizing means and self optimizing is clear that it finds the right parameter right power level right everything army directional antenna no sectorization obviously they don't want to have three sectors in your home so it's just a simple one antenna one direction 10 to 50 users 10 to 40 megabits low cost defined user group that clearly means that since this is restricted somebody else cannot come to your home and you know connect basically this is you know so, so cell numbers that can connect to it are restricted continuation of macro networks and handover of calls so basically that is another thing is that when you walk out of the home you can keep talking you know there is no disconnection this is just like changing the towers regular mobile equipment works in the phone femto cells so your phone will work multiple femto cells could coexist so now here is thing in one home so let's say the apartment building you got a femto cell and the neighbor got a femto cell that can happen right and so they can exist at the same time multiple femto cells could coexist should coexist new applications hd video streaming and lan services so now the, the thing is since it is such a small cell you can get a lot of power you can get a lot of bandwidth you may not be able to watch a video outside your home but inside your home you can watch that video because the it is coming via dsl okay so the carriers are thinking of i offering these new services that they could not do on the wide area <coughs> so femto cell so now i understand femto cell little bit better let's go to self organizing networks self organizing networks basically means that there are several things in the life cycle installation measurement configuration and then continuous measurement optimization if there is a problem self healing then configuration measurement this continues throughout the life cycle okay so basically they have designed these femto cells so that they are self organizing so they can continue to basically install install measure and then once they are in operation they measure the signal how much is the interference today what should we do then configure it again and then optimize it and if something breaks down cell feeling okay so user installable first of all <coughs> 70 million amps femto cell expected in 2012 so i i don't really know what happened to that number whether this was reached or not so obviously this is slide is pre 2012 so basically this is coming this is there i mean you know, femto cells are you know basically they said are are really i'm basically there somewhere not physically accessible to the carrier so because the carrier cannot really come to 
you know, fix anything and it's not worth fixing it because once they come to fix it, their annual thing is gone. They charge you $50 a month or something. Per year, they make $600. One truck roll is that much. So they don't want a truck roll. So not physically accessible. Operator provides the femto cell ID and customer registers the location. So with the thing that you get in the mail, you get an ID, you put that ID in, and, and then everything else is figured out. Self configures the transmission frequencies, the transmission power, the preamble, the ID cell, etc., whatever is required for preamble. And not, some IDs are reserved for femto cells and helps differentiate from the uh, macro cell. So basically, the ID itself says that I am a femto cell. So nobody else can come connect to it actually outside of the home, right? Neighbor cell list, and it also listens, find out if there are other femto cells that it can be that can be heard. And so that is find it, found found out, and and the macro cell as well, and is turned on off by the consumer. So dynamic topology. That's another thing is that femto cell, you know, the power may they may just turn it off. It's just like your home DSL equipment. I don't think most people will turn it off, but some people you know, can turn it off because they are paying for the electricity. Right? So these things are basically all designed into this whole technology. Self configuration, I think this is repeat. Remote configuration by the service provider, yeah. <coughs> So just like your DSL, the service provider can get into this. Be believe it or not, it's a service provider can come to your home and can, can listen to your traffic on DSL every day. Yesterday, I got suddenly a flash on my computer saying that your computer is making too many TCP connections in your home. And it gave me the name of your computer. I have 12 computers, I mean, not 12, maybe five, six computers in my home, right? So please look into this computer and see if there is a bug there, or if there is a virus there. So they're listening to everything, right? So, and there is no virus actually. So anyway, so the point, point is that here, remote configuration of service provider, if it is because the equipment does use the service provider facilities, they don't want to come to your home, but they can listen to everything, they can log into it, they can change the parameter. Same thing applies to DSL equipment. Femto cell senses the channel to detect neighboring cells. Fine. May broadcast messages for neighbors. So <coughs> it, it can basically um, participate into any of the things that we talked about, the broadcasting and other things. But this is basically in your home and under the control of the provider. All right. So, so the, the last few slides that in the series of relay nodes, and we talked about many different relay nodes. Now I'm moving, going to move on. Any questions about relay nodes and these small cells? So this was the lecture on the small cells, you know, that we were talking about before. Uh, what's, the, what's the advantage of small cells when compared to Wi-Fi? You know, yeah, in some sense it is similar, except that uh, if you have a 2G phone, or uh, if you have a phone um, which is not very smart, <laughs> if your phone is LTE advanced, obviously you have the best phone in the world. You know, you probably don't need to in any of this, right? And uh, you will probably even turn off that 4G at your home because you don't want to pay for it. But um, so you will have Wi-Fi, which is by design put in, you know, by the carry, by the equipment providers, equipment makers. So yes, so this does everything that the Wi-Fi does, and it is coming by DSL. So Wi-Fi comes by DSL, <laughs> right? Same thing, except that I think if you made a phone call using your Wi-Fi at home, then you got out of the door, it will get disconnected because Wi-Fi signal is not there, right? It is interrupted. Similarly, if you are making a phone call in the car and you came back into your home, if your if your home is like my home where there's no signal, it will get disconnected. Yeah. So if you could minimize that handover time, 
then you could essentially have no cell coverage in some of the apartment so long as they have Wi Fi. If you minimize the sorry, if you minimize the handover time, then so they're on the phone, they walk outside and then you switch to the phone number. Well, I mean so the thing is, Wi-Fi is not in their control. I mean, like Wi-Fi is private, right? I mean, you know, so they cannot do that. Your cell phone maybe become smart enough to do something like that, or you know, can just say the other guy, okay, I'm, I'm going to call you back on the <laughs> different line and get you the car and car again, call again. That's what we do, right? So the, you could do manual handover. <laughs> your question. Yeah, I was just making a comment that. It is in, it basically the carriers would like this because they can offload um, subscribers from the macro cell onto the Pimto mm -hmm. and because there's a limit of number of subscribers per cell. So this is also the advantage of Pimto cell over. Right, that, that, that's exactly the fact that said in the beginning is that okay. basically they want to put as much as possible on the relay networks because they, they get you, they can give you higher bandwidth, higher throughput, everything higher, right? And it still charge you. I mean, basically everything is charged here, right? As opposed to Wi-Fi, which is generally not charged. All right. So now we are back to you know intercell coordination. So uh, this applies whether it is a relay node or not. This is basically between two cells. Same problem that we did COMP. This is um, another version of COMP <coughs> coordination. So here is one cell and here is another cell and um, there are two mobiles at the edge, okay? Or this could be another situation that this is a big cell and there is a micro, this is a small cell and there are mobiles at the edge. In either case, um, basically um, these two can coordinate again by that underground link. So ENV, one of the ENV sends a load information message to the neighbor ENV about the interference level for the physical resource block. Now here's the thing again, if you remember what is the resource block? How many how many carriers? Subcarriers? Twelve, Twelve subcarriers and seven slots. That is a resource block. So for that resource block, it says, look, I am I want to talk to this blue guy and so I'm going to give him or her this particular resource block. So particular location it will say at this frequency at this time I will give it to him, right? And so either you don't transmit there. So basically, so, base, so what happens the other guy transmits only what they call almost blank subframe, ABS. So the almost blank because it does have a control, control part. So the each frame, subframe, remember subframe is half a millisecond long. Each subframe in the beginning has this control thing as to what is in this frame, who can, you know, for what user can be uh, upload and download and all that, right? So that is, control channel is there, but there is no user data in that one. All right? And so basically the power can be almost zero in the rest of it, right? So, so that is called ABS. Okay? So the blue guy is sending ABS here the red guy can even increase the power and talk to this red guy. This is very similar to COMP, just another concept here which was not, we didn't introduce before was ABS, almost blank suffering. Okay, and the load information actually starts from here. Um, the the cell this cell will tell its tower. Look, I am getting um, signal from this tower as well, and um, although yours is higher, I mean I, I am still in your cell, but I am getting from this. So then that load information will be sent underground to this ENB, saying that look, you know I have a mobile subscriber at the edge, and we need to coordinate. Another method of um, coordination is, is if you have carrier aggregation. If you have carrier aggregation, so let's say we have two carriers, green and blue, as shown here. 
and there are two cells the big cell and the little cell the big cell is using green and red green and blue you see this is the green cell for the big tower and this is the blue cell for the this tower here this is using blue and and green okay what they have done is they have said okay all right we are we have two carriers i am going to use green as the primary and blue as the secondary and this is i am going to use blue as the primary and green as the secondary they are coordinating each other right so this is the primary this is the secondary <laughs> primary is big secondary is small this is the primary green is primary and this is secondary right and then in this sub frame they would do the same thing like an absolute uh, abs and other things so this one is sending out its control information here in the green part right and the blue part is used you know for some other users but the control is here this one control is always in the primary right so the control is in the green part here the blue is the primary and so the control is here on the top and this, this is where they will define as to where rest of the users are all of the users are so by this coordination you see it's not just that the frames you can coordinate you can also coordinate the frequencies so basically everybody can get the main frequencies for sure primary frequencies for sure and the secondary if they happen to be in the right place okay so so we discussed many different ways of coordinating the frequencies now the actually the enbs have become very smart and so they don't need to worry about this whole issue previously remember we started this whole cellular transmission by saying that uh, you need you need to keep towers away in frequencies now we don't do that anymore we probably still do that in 2g and 3g because you know those equipments are old but for 4g we don't need to do it okay see you mp with small cells again one more is that um, i think this is basically repeat and uh, this is a small cell this is a macro cell and um, <coughs> the the this is range extension is also shown here so this is the primary area and this is the extended area and so ue can get service from multiple bss which means multiple enbs multiple relay nodes multiple home networks or rrh which was the radio heads can get get through multiple bss can send through multiple bss can send it. so here actually what is difference here is this is simultaneous transmission so this is uh, we haven't talked about so new part here is that this particular mobile is up link is here and the down link is here this is also possible you see that it is getting all the data from here but it is sending all the data to there up link and down link it can send data to multiple bss and it can get data from multiple bss so that is both down links both up links and all that so any combination is possible then multi media broadcast and multi sorry multi cast service mbms this is actually a slide this should have gone into the lte lecture but since it was not there i put it here <laughs> lte can do this our of course lte advanced can do it too is that basically whenever you have a broadcast such as a television you can send the same information from many towers so see what is shown here is there is a tower here e and b there is a tower here e and b and there is a tower here e and b three towers 
they are all getting the same information through underground, these dotted lines are underground. Right? All the towers are getting the same information. And they are getting a scheduling from this entity called MCE, multicast, multi-cell multicast coordination entity. So it tells them exactly when to transmit that and then the television can get it from multiple towers. This is the television. This is the mobile. And it is getting it from all three towers here. At the same time, the, all the three towers are transmitting the same information so instead of interfering the ad. All right? And, um, and obviously all the towers can talk to each other. They can talk to the MCE and they talk to the internet all via the underground. So is it clear how the multicast or the broadcast happens, the television broadcast? All right, that brings us to the end of 4G. And the seven key points, first of all, LTE advance meets and exceeds all requirements for 4G as specified in IMT advance. Right, so you know what is the definition of 4G. LTE did not meet it, but LTE advance does. The three key factors, now this is a mantra basically I told you is that <coughs> the, for the data rate, everybody wants higher data rate. For that, you need the spectrum, which means the bandwidth. You need the spectral efficiency, which can be done by many methods that we talked about throughout this lecture, and the cell size. All three are being used in LTE advanced. <coughs> LTE advanced can aggregate up to five carriers to make up 100 megahertz. And it has a frequency use of one and the same, since the spectrum is, ex is expensive, basically that is something that they want to use as much as they can. And so it is also, in addition to 100 megahertz, it also uses higher, higher order MIMO, so 8 by 8 MIMO. LTE uses relay nodes to cover remote areas and hot spots and also allows home EMBs, which are called femtocells. Code book and non-code book pre-coding improves MIMO. So basically when you do MIMO, you need to distinguish between different um, different antennas and things like that. And for that, the pre-coding was used. And the uh, if you remember, there was reference signals, the pilots were properly placed. And so that is what it was by code book or by non-code book. Code book meant the table, right? They, they follow the table and they tell the other guy, okay, well, here's the ta table, row number 15. I'm using, right? So that is the code book method. And then there's a coordination, coordinated multipoint operation, COMT, which allows mitigation of interference at the cell edge. <coughs> so basically at the cell edge, both of them are using the same frequency, but they coordinate with each other so that it doesn't interfere. And COMT can also be used with cross carrier scheduling cross carrier, here carrier means subcarrier. So basically you, well, here carrier means carrier, not subcarrier, sorry, <coughs> band. So you could use, one person could use this band, another person could use the primary. That was the cross carrier schedule. Okay. And um, all of this lecture actually came from 3GPP site. Okay, so I would really recommend that you read these four pages from 3GPP website. And again, I found that whenever there is the latest technology, the papers and the books are out of date little bit because they will say something but they, that the standard didn't select. And so then you say, well, does it do it or not do? So it's best to go to the source. And so this is why I went to 3GPP. And uh, it is very clearly written. That was the good thing. I was really surprised at the clarity with which they described all of these things.